Hello YouTube. So usual big YouTube fail. I thought I was gonna do a video every day of my quarantine and I haven't. <laughs> and I was going to do a live stream, which I actually did do, but then I did the timing wrong and I overslept. So I apologize to anybody who was waiting for that. I just have to admit that if like I want to say that in most aspects of life, I actually feel like I'm a relatively well-functioning person, but I obviously cannot get my YouTube game together. I just, I can't seem to figure out live streams. I can't do editing. I can't even be bothered to find a place where the lighting is in such a way that I don't feel completely hideous and bloated. Can't be bothered. <laughs> but I do apologize for anybody um, who was waiting for that live stream on Monday. That was a big fail. I'm just gonna not do live streams. It's just not. I'm just. It's just not a skill I have. Yeah. Just if you want, if you have something to say about my videos or my thoughts, just leave comments. I do read all my comments, and you guys know I love comments. Uh, and yeah, if everything goes well, I'm out of quarantine tomorrow. Um, please, please. My boss actually called the doctor and asked when I could be released from quarantine as well as the other teachers because several had to go into quarantine because they had proximity to me. And originally the doctor said I could leave tomorrow, but now, I don't know, she said Friday, which is in two days. And I really would like to get out before the weekend. Anyway. Now your guys' problem. Uh, Alright, so in the spirit of trying to bring people together, uh, my last couple of videos I said I wanted to talk more about uh, things that could maybe bring people together. <laughs> just, God, what a lame, so lame. I just repeated myself. Um, I washed my hair. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, and I'm not, you know, I'm not going to edit this out, even though it's just complete garbage what I've been talking so far. Um, I want to talk again about identity politics. I know you guys are all sick of hearing me talk about identity politics. And basically living in an echo chamber. Uh, and I'm going to do it by talking about BookTube. So I think a lot of you guys aren't BookTube watchers. Uh, what is booktube? Basically booktube is just the part of YouTube where people talk about books, they do book reviews and recommendations and vlogs and all this kind of stuff. And I do watch all those videos a lot. Um, actually anybody who would ever see my recommendations list would probably be like, what kind of weirdo is this? Because it's literally book videos, um, politics, and then Golden Girls. <laughs> that's, like, that's like my YouTube recommendations list. So, how am I going to bring this in? So I kind of talked, talked, or had a back and forth with a booktuber that I don't regularly watch. I've watched a couple of her videos because she was reviewing a book that I just recently finished reading and something that is kind of akin to porn to me is when I finish reading a book, I like watching videos about other people who read the book and how they review it, how they saw it, like I just really and she reviewed this book, and it's uh, basically the book is about two female spies who end up falling in love. And the woman who reviewed the book, she is a lesbian, and she basically said that the reason she didn't enjoy the book is because she doesn't feel comfortable or appreciate when non-lesbian authors write books that show or have lesbian characters. Uh, in the book community, when, when somebody of a, of a group writes about their own group, they call this own voices, okay? So if you're black and you write a book about black characters, that is a book in own voice. Or if you're a trans person and you write a book about trans people, then that is an own voice book. 
And the, the largest amount of people in the book community, they're super woke liberals, you know, I am not. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. Um, and most of them, they're really into this. They're really like, own voices. We need more own voices. We need more own, own voices. Oin, oin. And I am so against this. And this is again where I feel like where this identity politics comes into play and why I say I'm so against identity politics. For me, the idea of the Western world, Europe, Australia, North America, is that we come together as a people and we stop seeing color and we stop seeing sex and we stop seeing gender. And somehow, that actually used to be the idea of the left. The left used to be like, okay, we, don't, we shouldn't see gender, we shouldn't see... And now what we're doing is the left is again starting to pull things apart. You know, we see campuses where, you know, there's black dormitory now or only black coffee shops or, you know, women's uh, places where only women can be in, places where only where trans people can, like only trans people are allowed to talk on these issues and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, but we're not, ma we're not making the world a better place. We're pulling each other apart. I mean, like, it's actually really strange to me how, you know, when Jim Crow existed, the concept of Jim Crow was bad, and it is bad, because it was all about separating people. But now, in 2020, creating an all-black dorm somehow is liberating. And so I'm kind of like, so when a white person says we should separate the races, it's bad. But when black people voluntarily say let's separate the races, somehow it's good. And I, don't, I just don't understand this. Sorry, and I kind of like totally went off on a tangent. But you know, that's what you guys come for. You love my tangents. Um, <clears throat> so her and I kind of got into this where she was basically saying she, she doesn't think straight people should write books on lesbians because, you know, especially men have always talked over women and always have taken women, women's voices away and all this kind of stuff. And the thing is... So I left a comment and I said, you know, I really, really, I think I even said hate, which is actually really strong, but I was like, I hate your opinion on how only lesbians should be allowed, or only gay people should be allowed to write books on gay people. Isn't it actually more of a sign of progression that we live in a society where straight people voluntarily write gay characters? And in a good light, not even in a negative light, right? In a good light. Black people write about Hispanic people, Hispanic people write about Asians, um, trans people write about non-trans people, you know, I mean, like, doesn't that actually show that we as a people have become more open-minded, that we're willing to write about everything and anything and put that in as positive a perspective as we can? You know, I don't understand why we want to pull ourselves apart and be like, only lesbians can write about lesbians, and only gays can write about gays, and only black people can write about black people. I'm like, we're actually separating people, and, and like, if anything at all, I think in 2020 what we need to do is we need to come back together. And I would like to celebrate, I think it is great that there is straight white men out there who are like, you know, for my next novel I'm going to write about a queer black woman. I think that's amazing. I mean, like, the fact that they're kind of like, I, I don't have to write every novel that only talks about myself. And <clears throat> so going along, and then we kind of like, and then her, she did not pick up well on my comment. And this is where I really want to say, where I really think this is where identity politics has taken us. I was, in my head, I was talking to her just one person to another. You know what I mean? If anything, I'll maybe one gay person to another. And I was like, you know, I don't, I disagree with your idea of that, you know, especially in a book of fiction. I was like, it's a book of fiction. It'd be different if this was like some kind of psychology book and this was like some straight male professor saying that lesbians are sick and need to be fixed or something. I could see where she would then feel uncomfortable. But I'm like, this is a, this is a, a fiction novel with two women 
who are spies who fall in love. It, has, it doesn't say anything about all lesbians are this way or being lesbian is good or bad. It had nothing. It was just a fiction novel. And literally her response to me was, of course you as a man are going to tell me what, how I should think as a woman. And I think that comment to me epitomizes everything that I said that I think has become, is wrong with this concept of identity politics. She didn't see me as just another person. She didn't see me as a gay person. She didn't see me as just somebody who watched her video and had an opinion. No, I was a man and she's a woman. And because of identity politics, men are bad and men are evil and she is a perpetual victim and I'm trying to take her space and I'm trying, and I'm like, no, I'm just another tr human being trying to bounce off opinions off each other. It has nothing to do with you being a woman. If you had been a man reviewing this video and you would have said, I don't like straight people writing about gay people, I would have also said, I disagree with you. And this is really where we are going. And I, and I think this is why I think it's really scary when a lot of people are saying like, oh, identity, pol identity politics is nothing. It has become this very lazy excuse to never have to actually defend your opinions or your arguments by just playing the victim card. If, I, if now I talk with a black person, at some point in time they can be like, well you don't understand because you're white. And it basically kills the conversation. And it, I'm sorry, it is not a legitimate argument. It's just kind of like, oh well obviously you don't understand because you're white. Boom, argument is over. They win by default because they're black and so more oppressed or she wins because she's a lesbian and so she is more oppressed. And I think it's a very counter intellectual argument and it keeps us in this echo chamber. And I basically wrote back to her and I'm kind of like, you're the one who's making this an argument about lesbians versus men. I'm not coming towards you as like, here I am penis carrier since 19, you know, like, obviously I have more power than you and I'm going to lecture you on how you should feel about lesbians. No, it is about me reading a book and you reading a book. We have different opinions on it. I want to discuss it with you. And you turned it into a, you're not allowed to have an opinion opposing me. You're not allowed to tell me anything or ask me anything because I'm a lesbian. And only lesbians are allowed to ask me questions or have opinions about my lesbian opinion. And I'm like, how much of an echo chamber could you be living in? And how dismissive can you be of everybody else? Like, if you can't, if you can't defend your arguments based off of true logic and insight, then you should just not put them out there, period. And I just find it so... In a million years, in a million years... That would never cross my mind if I'm having a debate with somebody to then say, well, you're straight, so you obviously don't understand anything. It's kind of like, yes, straight people also have insight into life, and white people also have insight into life, and men have insights into life. And this, and this is where like, I just feel like we need to really, really think about where this echo chamber mentality is going where this identity politics argument is going. I mean, um, yeah, I just, I just really, I really don't appreciate people who say or think or do these kind of things. Um, I don't believe in the fact that, I personally do not think that as a gay man, non-gay men aren't allowed to have opinions on gay lifestyles, on gay choices. Of course they are. I mean, like, we don't live in a world where, I mean, and what is the end, what is the end game of this kind of thinking? Like, is it going to end up where literally we do have, you know, separate but equal kind of, I mean, we're really heading back into Jim Crow mentality. It's like, I can only hang out with other gay people and I can only shop at the gay bakery and I can only read books written by gay people and heaven forbid anybody who's not a gay male. And then it's going to break off even more. Then it's going to be like, well, I'm only allowed to talk with gay white men and date gay white men and go to gay white men's stores because, you know, heaven forbid somebody might, that is not affiliated to my group, might have an opinion opposing to me and that they're, they're trying to put their majority status on me. I just, I, I find this such 
terrible thinking. I think it's very myopic. I think it's very silly. I think it's super counterintellectual. And I just, I don't know, like, I, I, I would, I would, I just was so stunned by her feedback. And you know, this is something that's becoming more and more commonplace, right? Like I had on my Facebook, there was something like um, my school, UCLA, they put up some kind of ad and I forget what it was, but it was something also, like it was super pandering or something. And I just kind of was like, I don't need you guys to pander so much, blah, 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 blah. And I got, I, you guys would not believe how many comments I got saying things like, don't try to white, white explain to me how oppression works. Don't try to mansplain to me how, what it's like to be this and that. And I'm just kind of like, I'm not doing anything. I just happen to be white and this is my opinion. You know what I mean? Like, I could be black and have this opinion. I could be a woman and have this opinion. I mean, th th this, it, it's just kind of like, you know, and then you take people, like, I mean, I feel like I'm already in the losing game because I already fit two categories that are the ultimate evil nowadays. I'm male and I'm white. So I've, I'm already a loser in the identity politics scheme anyway. Like the left, already has almost zero interest in my opinion anymore as it is. But then we take somebody like Candace Owens, and you guys know how much I love Candace Owens. I don't agree with everything, but I like her a lot. And here is a black woman, technically almost considered at the very bottom of the identity politics of oppression Olympics. And when she says something that is against what the left wants to hear, then they also try to find something where it's kind of like, well, you have wealth privilege. You don't know what you're talking about. This, I mean, like, ha this has become such... It is literally the most anti-intellectual way to try to win a debate. You're put into a corner where somebody is saying, your argument doesn't make any sense. You don't get to talk to me because I'm Latina. You don't get to talk to me because I'm trans. Uh, you don't get to have an opinion on anything because I'm a lesbian. And... It's like, if that, is, if that is what your argument boils down to, then that tells me you don't really have an argument. All you have is this feeling of entitlement because you are somehow more oppressed than other people. And I really feel we need to get out of this. We need to, we need to drop identity politics. We need to get out of our echo chamber, and this is something that I really appreciate about a lot of my viewers. I just got a really nice comment from somebody who was saying how oh, they disagree with almost everything I say. <laughs> I think a lot of you guys feel this way, and but he's still willing to listen and you know give feedback. Thank you for that, by the way. And I think that is where a healthy, a healthy nation and a healthy people is. Don't dismiss people. I mean, like, that's, and also, if I think about it, actually, if I was, I haven't, I didn't write back again because it got, became like this circular argument where she just constantly turned it into a me lesbian versus you man, you know? And I kind of was like, I'm tired of this argument. I'm not even doing that. I'm like, I'm, I want to talk to you about the merits of this book and everything is turning into, you're a man, you're a man. And I'm like, yes, I'm a man. What does that have to do with anything? I'm reading a book. Um, but I haven't written back to it, but like also at the very end, I also feel like, isn't, isn't that basically sexist? I mean, and I think this is one of those things where people just, that make these arguments, they don't even realize how hypocritical they're being. I mean, her argument is basically like, you are a man and men are bad and they've done sexist things to women in the past. Ergo, your opinion doesn't matter and you have no right to talk. And I'm like, but aren't you basically then just perpetuating sexism? You're basically saying my opinion doesn't matter because I'm a man? That's sexism. You know, if I have a, if I have a discussion with a black person and then they basically shut down the argument by saying, well, you're white and, because, and white people, they aren't allowed to talk on this topic. That's racism. That is racism. You're basically telling me I don't have a right to have an opinion because of, because of my race. That's racism. And like, how are you going to combat, combat this supposed racism that exists towards your own people by being racist towards me. 
Like, I just, I don't, I just, I completely don't understand the logic. I don't understand what the end game is of this rhetoric, of this thinking, of this behavior. Uh, I, and I also, also, I have to say, I just, more than anything, and I'm sorry this is going to come across very pretentious, I know it is, but I don't know how to say it any differently. I have been blessed with literally living in seven countries by now and traveling a vast majority of the world. And it is just absolutely ludicrous, ludicrous to me to hear people in Western Europe and North America saying that these countries are so sexist and so racist and so prejudiced, I just, I'm just like, the, 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 the echo chamber and like the bubble you have to live in to believe that is just absolutely flabbergasting to me. I'm like, have you ever stepped foot out of the West? Have you ever stepped foot out of the West? If you, you want to see true racism, go to like China. Um, you want to see true sexism? Come here to the Middle East. You want to see true prejudice on, like, based off of religion? Go to South America. Go to the Middle East. You want to see true homophobia? Yeah, go to Africa. Go to the Middle East. I mean, like, what are you guys talking about? What are, literally, what are you talking about trying to make it seem that the West is this horrible, horrible, sexist, racist, transphobic... I mean, like, you're living in a world where you can actually be openly trans and complain about how horrible it is to be trans. Do you have any idea how lucky and entitled you are? Try doing that in Saudi Arabia. I'm like, you'd step out as trans and you're stoned to death and it's done. I mean, like, it's just ridiculous. I just, sorry, okay, now I'm kind of getting preachy and loud again. I don't know. Love to hear your guys' feedback. Um, have you ever played the race or the sexual identity or the, you know, basically the minority card? How do you guys feel about people playing the minority card? Do you really, do you think by constantly doing things like creating black only spaces or saying books have to be written in own voices or, you know, whatever these or you know do you think that this is actually helping us as a people do you think that this is and if you do think that this is a positive move then please explain to me how you think it is because i truly don't understand how separating people more and more is becoming is a positive thing so that's it oh and keep your fingers crossed that i can leave quarantine tomorrow and not friday all right, take care. Bye.